morning, boomers. The voice of the blockchain here, Satoshi's big cousin, Crypto's finest champagne. Crypto, thank you for tuning in. DeFi Live, where yield farming, pickle, honey, sun, and more. I'll be going over my results. Uh, you know, I started yield farming on all the platforms uh, heavy last week and good documenting it uh, live. So follow the champion here and uh, I'll be sharing my results and uh, maybe even getting into more stuff. We're going to run down and see what has been uh, giving us a return on our investments or not. Uh, we've been doing everything from Pickle, Honey Swap, the X Die Chain, Sun, Tron, T2X, and more. So drop a like, a subscribe, a post notification bell, a ding ding. Stay tuned in to the good crypto word that we spread every single weekday. Shout out to everybody on D Live as well. Make sure you're following me over there. I'm going to add 50 lemons to the bucket right now. And as I said before, don't give YouTube all this sauce. If you're a streamer, make sure you're checking this out. And if you're just a, a listener or a viewer, check this out too because there is content creators here on this platform that were either shadow banned or outright banned from YouTube. And uh, they've been going hard over here. So check that out. Shout out to Athlete. Good morning, sir. Good morning. We're going to run down the math and... Uh, We'll start off with the legacy markets today. Um, I have been ignoring them the past week. Uh, although I was in the green with the NVIDIA put credit spreads that I've been doing. NVIDIA's treated me good. Uh, you know, I've, I've done a plays on several stocks, but somehow I always end up going back to NVIDIA. The rates are what I'm looking for as far as the spreads. And um, I, haven't, I haven't lost a play when, with NVIDIA, I believe. Um, you know, I got into Amazon. I got clapped at one play on Amazon and then a few others. I mean, I've, I'm on net green, you know, I'm net positive on all the plays, but NVIDIA has been on point. So we'll talk about that later. Uh, S&P there at uh, 33.54, climbing 1.69% uh, uh, in the green today in the past, uh, since Friday. Uh, Dow there at 27.678. Everything's positive this morning. So uh, you can see Bitcoin reacting well. At 10.9, we're headed, it appears to be to 11K. So, uh, so far, so good. So far, so good. Let's check out the metals here. Metals are in the green too. So right now we've woken up to uh, greenery, some grass-fed beef out here. Let me click this ad from JM Bullion. Boom. And um, maybe I pick up some silver. Silver under 25 sounds like a deal or steal. Um, you know, I like picking up coins here and there. Uh, let's check out the bonds, see how they're reacting. Bonds uh, are slightly in the red, but about the same. The two years moving, but the 10 year and the five years slightly in the red. And uh, that's about it. Lady Plant says, yo, champ, we're growing pickles in the honey swap farm. Uh, <laughs> not in the honey swap farm, but uh, in the pickle farm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, we're pickle farming. Uh, pickles doing okay. I got the honey on the other side. I got honey. I got pickles, sushis, yams. We got foods. <laughs> and uh, it's funny how I was reading some headline there. I think it was on Coindesk about how the food meme was a big deal. Uh, there it is. M uh, money re uh, reimagined. Memes mean money. Sushi, yams, hot dog, DeFi memes may be a joke, but they point to how money is always created. Uh, community storytelling plus a new podcast. So I, d I haven't read this article. It was definitely an interesting headline. It's an opinion piece by uh, Michael Casey over there. And um, I guess they have a a whole podcast talking about these DeFi memes. Sushi, hot dogs, yam, shrimp. Uh, there's sashimi, pickles. I mean, there's a lot of them. I'm not going to read this whole article, but I may um, later. So I'm going to share this in the... Uh, the chat box is talking about food memes and uh, how they're significant in the DeFi culture and more. We're growing pickles in the honey swap. We got a pregnant lady plants pregnant. You're not. Uh, are you a developer? You're pregnant. What's going on with lady plants? Uh, Sky operator breaking news. Do you know about X moon? Yes, I do. I do know about Moon, and I've been seeing it uh, traded more on XDAI. My understanding is that Moon is like a game community, and they've bridged over to XDAI, 
And X Moon is the coin from that game community wrapped up in the X die chain. Lady Plants says, hell no. Uh, I, I didn't know what you meant. I, I saw pregnant Lady Plants. That is what it is. I was like, oh no, Lady Plants. Uh, oh yes, Lady Plants. I'm not going to say oh no because life is good. Uh, but, you know, she says, hell no. I know you got kids already, so kind of threw me off there, Lady Plants. Would be better to see a pump in the crypto market and a drop in the S&P, says Random. Yeah, but Random, if you haven't noticed, they're directly quarter, correlated as of late. You know, if the S&P goes up, usually Bitcoin goes up and vice versa. The S&P takes a big dump. Usually Bitcoin does uh, at least this year. So, um, yeah, let's let's look at the traditional. Well, we already looked at the traditional markets. Look at uh, let's look at the crypto coin prices run down the DeFi prices. Check out the farms. No, no, Lady Plants is not taking on live ammunition pickups. <laughs> there you go. Shout out to Lady Plants. She's got jokes today. Uh, Bitcoin there at ten eight eighty five, uh, up two percent in the past twenty four. We're starting to see a rebound here. We're starting to see a rebound here. If you see the past twenty four hours, uh, there's a lot of green here on the charts. I'm seeing like well, most of the coins are going green now in the past twenty four hours, uh, and they're following the stocks, guys. Look, the stocks are um, are green as well. You know, so um, yeah, Sky. We'll, we're we're gonna talk about um, X Die in just a moment, but yeah, X Moon. I've been seeing it. That pair's going up, and um, yeah, it's hot. It's hot. We're gonna talk about X Die too, and I've added to two other pools, and I'm gonna run down that um, information. Let's go down over here, uh, back to Coin Gecko. You got uh, Ripple at 24 cents, Bitcoin Cash at 230, Polka Dot there at five, 451, Chainlink. Bouncing back 1062, Binance 2692, Cardano at 10 cents, uh, Satoshi Vision uh, back number 10, Crypto.com uh, 15 cents, uh, Litecoin has been removed from the top. Guys, Satoshi Vision is dominating Litecoin. That's pretty sad. That's pretty sad. I, I got to be honest with you. I mean, because Litecoin was a pretty legit coin, right? I mean, I had it for a while, but this thing. I, I got to say, it's like the most, I'm not going to say the most disappointing coin, but I would I would nominate it as top five most do- disappointing coins in crypto, Litecoin. Wow. Anyhow, USD, I'm not even holding Litecoin anymore, so see you later. EOS at 261, Tron there at two cents. I'll be going over my Tron results. You know, I'm farming Sun. I got into that T2X stake thing, and uh, we'll talk about that. And uh, we'll run down the results. I'm in a few farming and a few, you know, farming operations out here. So we'll talk about it. Let's run down the DeFi charts. Uh, last time I checked, YFI was the, the leader out there. Uh, Chainlink, obviously, you know, number one. But besides the link, uh, it's Yearn, YFI, Wrap Bitcoin and Dye or Stable Coins. And uh, you got uh, Abe Lend is up there. Uniswap moving at f- uh, 459. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm reminded of like, you know, the Uniswap drop. Everybody was saying, no, it's going to go to 10. And remember when like it was like seven bucks, eight bucks. I was like, guys, I would probably sell half the bag right now. It dumped. And I mean, it's it's holding its price. OK, but, you know, if you got a bunch of Uniswap coins and you didn't sell some of them above five, I, you'd probably be kicking yourself right now. Uh, synthetics there at 512 uma at 1028 maker 529 uh, compound what's interesting is compound's been slipping in the rankings along with maker and compound has a nice ui and um it seems to me like compound kind of set off this wave of DeFi. if you ask me maybe i'm wrong but yeah let's look at these uh the farms the top farm it's uh, it's still uh, wrapped ETH against wrapped Bitcoin. I'm in that f- uh, farm. Haven't made much off of it with those liquidity provider tokens. I have been able to deposit them and earn Uni, but I haven't even earned one Uni, honestly. And Uni is like less than five bucks. So, you know, I'm questioning whether I should be moving that capital into Pickle or into Honey. We'll be talking about Honey and Honey Swap. Boomed over the weekend, touching like fifteen hundred dollars, guys. We got into it last week. Like at six and change, like seven hundred bucks, and over the weekend it cu- pumped over to like fifteen hundred dollars, um, and then now it dumped and it's about nine hundred. So I'm still up. Uni's going to ten. As stupid as it sounds, how could Uniswap coin get priced at even five billion at governance only token at five billion? Biggest joke I've ever seen. Uh, 
so far, says Random. Yeah, I mean, it may or may not, but the whole point is is that, you know, it was clearly above five, like pumping, 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 and a lot of people holding on to it with the greed of saying, it's going to 10 right now, and I'm trying to get as much as possible. And um, it didn't. And, and, you know, at that point, I, I think that the right move was to sell half the bag and then maybe just buy the dip. I mean, if you're really looking, you know, to hold uni for a long time, it's pretty obvious that when something hits the exchanges, it pumps and it dumps. I mean, it happens almost every single coin. So, uh, yeah, I like uni and I think it's going to be around. Uh, I don't, I can't give any solid price predictions, but I could see it going over five at one point. Now, how long is it going to take? You know? So you got wrapped ETH and wrapped Bitcoin are still uh, the number one pool. You can see the returns have gone down. I got into this pool and it was around 40% uh, yearly returns. Now it's a little less than 30. Okay, let's look at the degenerate pools according to CoinGecko. And if you notice, they removed Pickle. I don't even see Pickle on these lists anymore. And Pickle's still listed, but it's you know it was it was creeping up to the top 10 and they just removed it. It doesn't come up on these lists, and it doesn't even come up on the degenerate, you know, warning red flag list here that CoinGecko is warning us about. Remember, it was the top one over here. It seems to me like these de- degenerate pools now are less than 100,000 value locked. So um, let's see, you know. You got kimchi. There's a lot of them. It's a lot of them. But... um it's interesting that they took Pickle down here. I mean, they haven't taken it down from CoinGecko, but it's not listed. But if you search for it, it's it's still here. It's it's still here. Is it? Because I searched for it last night, and it was still there. Yeah, there it is. Pickle Finance is right there. And uh, it's currently trading at $44. We got it at 30 so, you know, 29 I believe. Uh, this thing topped off over the weekend around 52 Okay, and it's still moving. Um, I have let's let's start off with that. Uh, let's start off with that because so far, uh, I think pickle has been one of my more uh, lucrative farming operations here. Let me uh, pull up the math. Let me make sure that we're all logged in here correctly. I got to unlock wallet, but I think I'm on the XDAI chain. I'm getting messages too for if people are saying, oh, I'm having trouble connecting to the XDAI chain. Remember, you got to add the custom RPC settings over here first. You got to click on custom RPC settings and then add all the information that I have in that video. And once you add it, you still got to switch. Usually, you mean, you're on, by default, you'll be on the main Ethereum network, but you need to switch the XDAI. Okay, and then uh, the website that's running on XDAI should recognize your wallet. Uh, but let's go back to the main Ethereum network because that's what is uh, where Pickle's at. And I'll hit refresh here. Unlock wallet. And uh, let's see how much Pickle I've gotten. Uh, I've farmed almost four Pickles. 3.8 plus 0.03. And I can harvest these in real time. Pickle price is $44. I have been able to farm this with a two ETH worth of capital. So uh, less than a thousand bucks, and uh, I've gotten about. Let's let's round it off to four pickles because we're at three point eight uh, plus point oh three. I think by the end of the day, I'd be closer to four. So let's round it to four. Four times forty. You're looking like a, about a hundred and sixty dollar return with less than a thousand dollar investment. I, I I put two ETH worth of capital. So uh, there you go, and you could see that I was able to get into mining pickle because I. Join the pickle ETH liquidity pool, and I don't know how much I've end, uh, I've earned with that because once you deposited liquidity provider tokens, the earnings don't show up here on well on uh, that's Honey Swap. I'm looking for uh, Uniswap. So let's pull this back up here. I'm staying on that uh, that pickle thread. So if you can see, I, I, it says I, I don't have any liquidity. That's because I, I deposited all my liquidity tokens. So I do assume that they're still earning, but since they're not there, um, I, they're not being accounted for until I put them back. But um, yeah, I'll show you. If you go to accounts and then your your address, 
I mean, it still says that I've only earned 10 cents on fees, but I deposited the WBTC, WETH liquidity provider tokens to farm uni. So I'm sure if I take that out and put it back here, it should reflect. Sushi uh, WETH I got out of. And then pickle ETH is, I got these tokens and that's how I was able to deposit it over here to earn the pickle. I like that pickle has a gold besides to create wealth. All the other food coins don't seem to be that the same way. Uh, you make a point there. Uh, I'll tell you this though, uh, Dr. Puff and stuff. I, I would I would look at uh, at XDI, the honey swap. That's, um, you know, another food honey and, you know, what, whatever. It, but their value proposition, it doesn't even talk about creating wealth. They're just, they're trying to uh, get a faster Ethereum going. The sister chain to Ethereum XDI. And I'll tell you, uh, that thing runs fast and the fees are low. And uh, I'm going to show it right now, actually. And yeah, champ, it stops telling you your profit while your LP tokens are in somewhere else. Yeah, but I'm, I would assume that if I, you know, I put them back there, it should um, recalibrate the numbers. So, um, yeah, I'm glad that you caught that as well. Let's talk about XDI, XDI and honey. This thing is, uh, I'm, I'm liking honey, guys. I'm liking honey. I'm, I'm, although I've made some decent gains with the pickle. Considering, you know, what I put in as far as capital, I'm, I'm more excited about this honey, this side chain to uh, Ethereum, and you're able to connect directly with your MetaMask with the same key pair. I feel like there's there's value here. I feel like there's value here. And um, the Uniswap over there on XDAI is HoneySwap. It's, it's a direct fork. And um, let me connect to it. Here it is. You see that I, I can't connect to the wallet yet because I need to switch to the XDI network. For those that keep writing me messages on those other videos, once you put the custom RPC settings into your MetaMask, you need to change from the main Ethereum network to the XDI network like I'm doing right now so that HoneySwap and the XDI dApps can identify your wallet. So you can see now I'm being identified. I, you know, I got a balance of just 10 DAI in here. Plus, you know, the honeys and the stuff I'm doing. But uh, so let's go. Let's go to the honey over here, guys. The honey uh, info, honey charts. And then I can talk about uh, there's a honey faucet where you can get free honey, too. I just uh, we did the research on that. I want to share that with you guys. So uh, let's look at the results. Where are my honey results? I got so many. I got the faucets up. I got the honey. There he goes. The honey swap. Where's my charts? Honey swap charts. Hold on. Okay, that's now we're basically this should be it. So this is the the protocol analytics for uh, Honey Swap, and um, again this is Uni on XDI. Okay, Uni on XDI. XDI is a sister chain to Ethereum where you could do everything that you could do on Ethereum, but for way cheaper because it runs on the Dai stablecoin, and like I'm talking about like the fees are less than a penny or about a penny per transaction. It's it's pretty cheap. So you can see the liquidity for this honey tokens on, on the way up. It's less than a million still, okay? But the volume is higher than the liquidity. The volume is higher than the liquidity in many of these tokens, okay? Let's look at my results. You can see I've earned fees, okay? I got, a, I got about a thousand in liqu liquidity here. I've earned fees, guys, okay? Um, I've joined, joined the honey X die pool. Uh, I got about, um, point, well, not about 0. 0.32 honey in there along with 287 X die. And I have earned $9 in fees. Um, you know, you can see right here how much honey and how much die that equates to one that really was pretty cool, uh, to get into was the stake X die liquidity pool. When I identified this pool, it only had like 15, 10, 15,000 of liquidity. And you could see now it has over 100,000 of liquidity. So this thing is moving. You know, dang, the liquidity is less than the volume. No, it's the opposite. The liquidity is higher than the volume here on XDAI, which is awesome. I mean, like, you know, volume is what generates fees in these pools. And then honey steak I got out of. And then I got more honey and I got more steak and I put, put it in here. So... What's going to happen with these honey tokens? I, I, I would assume that soon you would be able to stake your honey or uh, excuse me, stake your liquidity provider tokens and, you know, do something else sort of like uni. 
But what's different here with honey is that they're distributing the honey token with a faucet. And uh, to join that faucet, you have to uh, do this thing called Bright ID or whatnot. And uh, let me let me uh, link you to the information with that. Here's the honey faucet. Okay, guys. And liquidity is who the fees are shared with. Yeah, liquidity is how much uh, uh, tokens are, are deposited in the smart contract. Liquidity is how much is deposited in the in the, the pool and in, in, in the, the liquidity pool, the total amount deposited in that pool. And then the tr- the volume is, you know, people are trading against that pool, swapping coins back and forth, you know, from die to honey, from honey back to die. So it's that pair. And it's always trading. It's generating fees. And those fees are kicked back to the holders of the pool. Um, OK, so back to this honey. Am I am I sharing my screen? Yeah, I am. Uh, So right here, guys, this is the faucet for honey. Okay, keep your eyes on this. There's only a there's a circulating supply of less than twenty five thousand coins. This thing hasn't even hit coin gecko. Do not sleep. Okay, I'm just saying don't sleep on this. At least look at it. I'm not saying to get in or get out, but I believe in my opinion, it's worth to look at this. This thing may be undervalued. So you need to do your research, but, you know, pay attention. And mo- and volume are the mo- are and are money that the fees come out of exactly exactly, uh, Doctor Puff and stuff. So, uh, let's talk to uh, about Hive. Um, uh, this is the faucet from Hive. This is where you get honey. Honey is the token, the governance token on HoneySwap, which is basically Uniswap on XDAI. If you want to join this liquid uh, this faucet, you have to uh, j- you know get verified with Bright ID. You got to read about it. This is an interesting way to verify an ID that still, in essence, tries to keep things anonymous. Read about this, okay? And, and go down this rabbit hole, guys. I'm not going to do... Uh, this is a whole nother video, but I'm pointing you in the direction. Yeah, I just linked to the, the faucet site there, Greenhouse. I'm going to link one more time for you guys that are not paying attention. Okay, I'm not going to go over to the how-to, okay? But this is... The direction that you want to go if you want to get free honey. And this is where verified for a faucet. Yes. That why? So that people don't make multiple accounts and, and, and you know, uh, have multiple wallets hooked up to the faucet. Okay. Prevents any previously connected address from registering, claiming or connecting. So uh, go down this rabbit hole. I haven't done. Uh, I haven't verified yet. Okay. I haven't, you know, I haven't activated this, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you this is like one of my next things to go down. And then you could read about this bright ID, how it works, why it may or may not be good. Um, you know, yeah, peek under the honey hood. Yeah, I think it's worth under the, to peek. There's definitely, uh, I, th- I believe there's something here. Let's look at the protocol analytics real quick and compare them to like Uniswap. And you could see the total protocol uh, has a liquidity of less than $2 million. This is for the entire chain. Uh, you know, compare that to, to uh, the charts over here on Uniswap. I mean, it's, I mean, they got 2.3 billion. I mean, this is, you know, the volume is, the 24-hour volume on Uniswap is higher than all of the liquidity on XDAI. So you got to understand what you're, you know, you're comparing like a, a big dog to a little, a little guy, a little small fry here. Uh, he, he's a little, he, a little tyke. Honey swap. An X die chain is a little tight, but you know, that's part of the speculation here that, you know, perhaps maybe, you know, this is new young and you know, this is, could be the next wave you know, could be, I don't know. You know, I think it's worth that all of us as a community look at this and we share our ideas. I've been liking, you know, building with you guys. I'm not trying to tell you do this or not do this. And I, you know, for the most part, I'm also listening like, yeah, you know, Puffin stuff said this greenhouse said that uh, Zilla said this. And, you know, and I, and, you know, I share all that so that we can come up with our own conclusion. But I think, okay, that there's something here. Yeah. Look under the hood. So, um, absolutely. So if you want to read more about like honey or whatnot there, it's, it's worth to read about this community and get into it. 
I'm not going to go under all the hood, but there, I think there's something here, guys. That's all I got to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been covering this for a week now, the X die chain. I'm excited about this. And why? Because it's an easy way for Ethereum DeFi projects to migrate without having to change about just about anything, okay? It's still the same token address, okay? It's still the same MetaMask, the whole connection, still the same code. So... In a way, it's like, why not be a migrate and, and be able to have more users on your dApp? Because one there, there's a barrier to entry here, guys, here with this DeFi stuff on Ethereum, and that is the high transaction cost. I mean, I'm sure you guys already know, sometimes you want to push a transaction just to interact with a smart contract, and you're paying anywhere from $3 up to maybe even $15 every time you do a, a function, okay? And... In order to get into some of these liquidity pools and make some of these farming moves, you got to perform maybe anywhere from one to four functions. So, you know, you could easily just by getting into a play have to spend like 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Compare that to XDAI doing the exactly same thing. And you would, you know, your fees are, are, are pennies on the dollar, pennies on the dollar. So um, let's look at the top pairs here and we could talk about Moon. Because this thing has been moving as well. You could see this X Moon, X Moon. Okay, Moon. My understanding is there's like they're a gaming community that they were dealing with their own blockchain, and recently now they're migrating over to X Die. Okay, so Moon is their token or their little gaming community or whatnot, and it's wrapped here in the X Die chain, and uh, now people are providing liquidity. Look at these pools. They just look at the money how it, it increases i was looking at the stake x die pool last week you could see it in my video it had like ten thousand dollars worth of liquidity and i'm like man you know because i ended up using that pool to get stake i swapped from x die to stake on this and it was like oh you know you may not have sufficient funds in this pool to perform the swap it, it ended up having enough funds and which led me to looking at this pool i'm like wow this pool doesn't have a lot of a liquidity i'm like maybe i should add to this pool and be a bigger shareholder, you know, because, you know, it's you got to look at it like this, guys. You're getting a share of the pool, okay? So with these pools, one could argue that it's better to be a big fish in a small pond than the opposite, okay? You want to have the, if you know, if you have the majority share of a liquidity pool, you may be making more fees uh, than if not. I don't have all your hopes and dreams died into crypto. Not healthy. Uh, you don't want to act like a Cardano Ripple guy. Yeah, don't don't get married to these coins. That's that's obvious. I mean, we're we're not married to these coins. We're just looking for opportunities. And let me click on this ad. So that's the that's the the rundown with X If you have questions, drop them on me, guys. Okay, drop them on me if you got questions. Uh, next, we're gonna run into um, Sun Mining, uh, Tron T two X, and all that stuff. Let me pull up Sun. Justin, uh, Justin Sun and them. I know that they're they're hated by some. And um, so Sun is the DeFi token there on TRX, and then they also have Just Swap. I'm farming this Sun token, which how much is Sun worth right now? Last time I checked, it was about seventeen dollars. It's Sun Token, so the Sun with the glasses. There's another Sun Token. Don't 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 confuse it with Sun Contract, Sun Token, Sun Chain. It, it, excuse me. It's Sun Tokens. Make sure that the logo has a little Sun with glasses on it. That's the right one. There's a several ones. So you can see Sun Token. You know, it's down. It's fourteen ninety three. It's up one point eight. I guess it dumped over the weekend or whatnot. Um, but yeah, I farmed this token. I have received. Not even a full token, 0 0.79, 0 0.79 from adding, from depositing my Sun TRX LP tokens into this pool. Now, the big question is, now maybe someone can help me with this because I can't seem to find where I could track my results from being in this liquidity pool the sun trx liquidity pool wrong button wrong button wrong button so i received these liquidity pool tokens from entering 
into the Sun TRX liquidity pool. I deposited it into this right here so that I can earn Sun tokens. But where could I find, or even, I mean, I don't even know where to look, uh, the information for the Sun TRX liquidity pool. I can see where I can, uh, you know, I can go to the pool here. It comes up, view pool info. All right, it should be right here, here, but I don't see that I've gotten anything. Maybe since I've deposited those tokens somewhere else and it's like Uniswap. I don't know, but that's, that's something that, you know, cause I kind of come over here and I click on it on view pool, more pool info. And it takes me to this and I don't, you know, I go scroll down and I don't have that little, um, that same section on Uniswap that gives me the rundown. So maybe it's not accounting for it since I've deposited those LP tokens in the sun site and I got to remove them and, and it can come over here. And yeah. Pool tokens. It tells me my pool share, but it doesn't really tell me anything here so we'll see oh can't see your screen my bad my bad my bad so i'm sorry about that um yeah so talking about i'm in the sun trx pool and i you know it shows me that i'm in it but it, sa it says zero 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 everything and i can't see that, that i've earned anything maybe like Pu puff and stuff said uh you know this is the case on the ether when you deposited your lp tokens into another site that information doesn't come up in the pool on the swap site so uh, we'll see now move over to t2x this is like the hex knockoff and um it seems a little bit more risky or whatnot but i don't know i'm gonna be honest it seems like it's running pretty good uh you could see my results and this one's a little bit different you have to in order to get the tokens you got to enter an auction there's a daily auction and that's how the tokens are minted and then you could take those tokens and stake them uh, and then those uh, the auction fees are distributed to all the stakers. So someone wrote a comment. They're like, you know, it's it's a, it's like hex, but uh, as what's difference between this and hex? Said the commenter is that almost all the tokens get redistributed to the holders, as opposed to hex, where some of it goes to Richard. They said, I don't know if that's true or not. I'm just repeating the comment. Okay. Random says, wait, are you doing all your activity on next day? No, I'm not. I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm attacking all these chains. I'm, I'm going over, I went over uni. I went over, uh, honey. And now I'm going over sun and now T2X. Doesn't that mean if 2.0 is a big success, all these coins could be rendered obsolete? Not really. Not really. Um, I still think there's a there's a demand for stable coins and the the fact that it, it you know X die runs on the die stable it's it's like the fees are just only paid in die. So, you know, some people may like that. You got to write down your entering positions and then compare them to your exit position to really see what was happening. Absolutely, yeah. I know what I put into these these uh platforms. I haven't been taking out yet, so Had one of the ninjas cash out on Sun today. He feels it's kind of a hot potato because of the high percent he got wrecked on Pearl. Okay. Okay. Have you looked into YFFS? Looks like a really soft. I've never heard that one, Tulico. And Dr. Puffin stuff is uh, answering the random. He says 2.0, firstly, is going to staking. Cheaper fees won't be until next year, I don't think. Yeah, and at the pace this Ether 2.0 is going, it's like, you know, you want to hurry up and wait to see if maybe your coins get obsolete. People got to go. There's there's demands right now for these DeFi projects. And, you know, people, you know, a day or a week in the crypto space is a long time, you know. Maybe coulda, shoulda, woulda, 2.0 may come or not, like. Right now, we got something that's working with XDAI. And it's funny because, uh, didn't e uh, Ethalic, v Vitalik say something like this on his uh, Twitter? Like, you know, those that are complaining, complaining about uh, Ether's utilization capacity and its upgrade, why don't you just use any of the side chains that's already working? That's basically what he, uh, he said. So um, let's see. You know, and again, to me, I'm not one of these guys like it's it's one or the other. I'm I'm using all of them. I'm not like oh, since I'm using Tron, I don't I can't use Honey, or since I'm on Honey and uh, I like ETH, and it's you know no guys, I'm I'm gonna use them all, and I, you know, 
and I'll tell you guys from experiences, from my experience, which one is booming. Uh, this uh, one, YFFS is currently getting audited. Yeah. I'll, I'll check him out. I'm doing all this DeFi just to have a better position in e-staking when it comes out. That's a good, that's a good thing. I mean, I've said this before, okay? The only cryptos that I'm interested in hodling long-term are ETH and Bitcoin. I've said this, I don't know how many times, but in the meantime, in between time, you got all these things that are, are moving with a lot of volatility and uh, we may be able to capitalize off that, you know, uh, as swing traders, as speculators or whatnot. So, you know, but... I agree with Dr. Puff and stuff. I mean, you know, if you're looking to save, you know, in my opinion, I got to say, this is my opinion because I could be wrong. I like Bitcoin. and I'm not trying to save any of these coins. I'm, I'm looking at all these other plays as a tool to keep stacking more bits, more bits and more kabooms. Let's hope more and more bridges get built, says Random. There is, and, and it's working. Uh, I, I think this is pretty good. I like the x die, and I'm not, you know, I, I'm going to say I'm not shilling it because I kind of am or I'm not. I don't know. I mean, I'm just I'm just sharing, guys. I think it works. I like it, uh, and I've, I've gotten a little honey on it, and I've been pretty transparent as to what I'm doing here. But I don't think it's either or. It's not like, oh, you know, since ETH may upgrade, it's over for x die. I mean, there's a long way to go for that. Yeah, just use the DeFi uh, to have more ETH and more BTCs. Right, that's the that has been the game plan since for a while now. I mean, like you, I've always said it. I mean, I don't even look. I mean, I reflect on the prices of these coins in in USD because you know everybody understands that. But you know, the, the bigger picture here is to stack BTC. Oh, they ain't paying you, sure. You're not shilling. That's right. That's true. That's true. But, you know, I'm, I, I stand to benefit as more people come to the platform, right? If you're a holder. So, um, but, you know, we're, we're being honest here, guys. We're being transparent. I, I try to keep a 1,000 out there. Because, you know, there's, there's always a crypto cuck out there that, that wants to complain. So, I got to keep my bases covered. So, yeah, T2X. Let's talk about T2X. I think I got, I entered an auction yesterday, I think. Let me see. I threw a thousand TRX tokens. This takes a little second to load up for the results. When you get to this page, give it a second. You'll see that it takes a little second for um, the rest of the days to load up. You see now they're loading. It took about maybe 20 seconds. Um, so I received 1.39 TRX uh, on yesterday's auction. I put out 1,000. So I've been throwing, you know, I started off with 4,000 and then I've thrown uh, 2, 1, 1. So I've, I've, torn, I've, I've thrown in a total of 1,000, 7,000 coins, I think. Let me collect these coins and I'll stake them. I'm changing. I'm changed my thinking on BTC staying on the top coin forever. Gold isn't the most expensive commodity. Uh, it may not be, you know, number one forever, puff and stuff. But I think for the short term, it's going to be outperforming most uh, store of values, including gold. But you know, I've made a an argument that ether itself may be more valuable than Bitcoin. I, I don't. I'm not saying it is, but you know, the argument could be made. You know, considering that there's a lot of coins like Chainlink and all these DeFi coins, plus the wrapped B BTC that's pledged to the Ether network. I mean, there's a lot of capital there. There's a lot of capital. The new Apple and Amazon on the blockchain will pull ahead eventually. Maybe, yeah, maybe. It could be, and we've talked about that too, you know, what maybe some of these new coins. So let's talk about uh, what I've staked. I've staked... 6,000 coins and I've earned 81 TRX. That's been in a week. And then I stake 3.4,000 T2X coins and I've earned 23 TRX. You see, it's right here, guys. It's, it's right here. And this has been with uh, 
this is the third time so four plus two plus one so yeah, I, I put a total of 7,000 T2X into this after I do this deposit. So let me put another 15. Someone told me that the sweet spot, I think it was Marlon, sweet spot to stake is 10 days because uh, the, I, every, the, the bonuses come in five-day increments. So I, my first stake was for seven days, and he's like, oh, you might as well have done it for 10 because you know on, that, on, that t on the 10th the day, you get an extra bonus. So um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and stake this 1500 and uh, see what we earn of it. And again, um, you can see what my rewards are. And I haven't been able to unstake this because I'm staked for a, a total of seven days on this first stake and a total of 10 days on the second stake. And now I'm, my third stake will be another 10 days too. Now, this is a, a referral platform that will, it offers an incentive to refer people. And I'll tell you what that is. Referrals will earn an extra 5% minted T2X token on their auction lobby purchase. And the referrer will earn an extra 10%. So uh, there's an incentive if you guys want to try this out. And uh, I'm dropping the link here in the chat box for the T2X. And if you want to use that link, you get an extra 5%. And again, you know, I've already shared what my opinion is with this. Um, I wouldn't throw the whole bag on it, but I'm going to try it out. I'm going to try it out. And that's about it, guys. I think I've hit all the beats. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. We've talked Pickle. We've talked Uni. We've talked Justin. Sun. We've talked Honey. x uh, What else? Moon. Uh, I told you where the Honey Faucet is, which I think is uh, pretty good plug there guys i gave you a nice plug let's let's talk about this uh this honey token again and why i think there's some value here let's talk about honey i want to show you guys this token on the blockchain explore so you could see <clears throat> the circulating supply guys come over here to honey h and y There's only 24,000 tokens. And this number is growing because, you know, the faucet is minting more. But if you go back to the faucet, they only have like another 200 tokens to give out or something. like. It's not like they're dropping thousands. Where is it? Is it here? Is it there? There's so many damn tabs up here. Is it here? Yeah, there you go. You see the faucet? They're, they have 270 more to be distributed. Right now, the circulating su supply is 24,000. So, like I'm saying, this token circulating supply is less than YFI. Okay? It's less than YFI. The volume is higher than the liquidity pool. And I can only see this growing. And it's not even on CoinGecko yet. Okay? And then you could be like, well, maybe this X die chain is funny bunny. Maybe it's never going to be on CoinGecko. And this is just some funny bunny little baby chain. That could be the case. But stake is already listed, guys. S-T-A-K-E is already listed and it's already number 140. So I can imagine that Honey will be hitting the chart soon. Um, read, read about x -Dye, guys. That's all I got to say. I'm uh, Look under the hood and I want your opinions, Puff and stuff and the other guys, Operator, Random, let me know. I mean, I'm already in, you know, I, I got about a, you know, a thousand, a little less, more than a thousand dollars in liquidity. And let me be uh, clear. I want to say this for those that are, are tuning in and just catching wind of this. I consider DeFi farming advanced and risky, in my opinion. In fact, I don't know if all the moves that I'm getting into are going to be profitable. There's with considering impermanent loss in this liquidity pool, which is something you guys need to research. The concept of impermanent loss, which is most... Uh, I think most people, it's above their heads. They don't even get it. Uh, between that and the fees, you don't know. So I, I'm covering this to learn and to have fun. But if, you know, if, if you're not sure, if I would say, guys, you're better off just hodling, you know. I just want to be clear about that because, you know, you see me doing all these wild, wild moves, testing this platform, that platform, and uh, sharing this link and that link. And you'd be like, damn, champ, I mean, is this really even going to work? I don't know. 
I'm going to be, I don't know. I'm, t- I'm going to figure it out though. You know what I'm saying? If you want to try it out too, it is risky. And I've said, if I lose the bag that I put into these, these, uh, this experiment, then I'm okay with that. I'm looking at it like an education purpose to me. I'm paying to learn by experience. Uh, but if you can't accept that and you know, you don't want that risk, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there for you guys. You're better off just probably just stacking Bitcoin and ETH and just riding. You know what I mean? The word impermanent loss made me think I could lose all my coin. I was glad to learn that that wasn't the case. It was a scary set of words together. Yeah, but this is something that we all got to learn. I mean, if you don't even know what impermanent loss is then maybe you shouldn't even be messing with this. You see what I'm saying? Like, th- th- this is something that you got to look into. Like, Puff and stuff's like, whoa, I heard these words. I started looking into it. At least now he he knows about it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, make sure you know about it. And if you want to calculate in permanent loss, there is a calculator over here on, on uh, CoinGecko. I don't know how accurate it is or not. And, uh, you know, I can't say that I have experience in permanent loss that I could account for directly and show you, but I, I definitely understand the, the, uh, the concept you go to farms and, uh, you can use the calculator here. So if any of your assets significantly change in price, it may mess up the calibration of the pool and, uh, you may win or lose, (laughs) Just give you an example. I mean, asset one goes up 10%. You have an impermanent loss of uh, 0.11%. This is less than 1%, right? So, you know, the argument being made is that on the other hand, that you would make up the loss or even more in fees, which I understand. I mean, and that could be true, but, you know, it has to be accounted for. And you got to actually, at the end of the day, figure it out on your own. But yeah, check out impermanent loss. That's something that, you know, that's, a risk that's involved uh, besides, you know, the programming risks. I should do a video on impermanent loss. I don't think there's any videos on that. Just the concept and, you know, what it is. But people people don't want to hear about how they can lose money. They want to hear about how they can stack it. But you got to at least know, you know what I mean, guys? Uh, I shared the faucet, boom. And uh, let me share also... Oh, yeah, this is where you can. Um, so what's the point of honey so that you could vote on the proposals? That's the whole point. The big uni liquidity pools are the most safe for new investors. The returns are less. Right. Like, and that's why the very first pool I got to was the biggest one. It was uh, wrapped ETH against wrapped Bitcoin. I, you know, it has the most liquidity. And let's let's be honest, you know, Bitcoin and ETH are less volatile than some of these baby coins. And since the volatility is less, uh, the impermanent loss should be less as well. All right, guys, I'll take a few more comments and questions. Uh, let me pass out these uh, these lemons, actually. All right, hit um, claim rewards. I'm going to pass out lemons here on DLAT. These are crypto tokens that are basically <laughs> worthless. I think they're like less than a penny, but it's fun. Let's do it. Pass 51 out right now. Let's go. Click claim rewards. Oh, I added... Oh, now I'm going to pass out 100. You guys got lucky. I, I, I clicked uh, submit to the chest instead of distribute. So I'm going to click distribute. You click claim. Boom. Let's go. Today, our athlete, athletes, a big winner. Shout out to athlete out there. Congratulations. Thank you for tuning in. Kaboom. 
What's your opinion on NFTs? Non-fungible tokens. Um, I mean, I like it. I think that the, it, it, the first thing that comes up to mind is like, you know, artwork and stuff like that. And look, I click on here and there, there's a basically uh, an article about it. The inevitable marriage of yield farming and non-fungible tokens explain. Why is the marriage of NFTs and decentralized happening now? It's debatable, but you can make an argument that it comes back to DeFi's favorite robo-advisor, Yearn. And what's an NFT? It's it's a non-fungible token. So that means it's a unique one-of-a-kind token, like a crypto kitty. Uh, you know, like a the, the, there's not one token that's the same. So you can you know make a piece of artwork that's an NFT token. Oh, all right. Uh, there's been years of fertilizer, but somehow the excitement engendered this summer by yield farming has come to NFTs this fall. And here how Yearn could have helped. When the DeFi gateway created Y Insure, a way to do KYC free insurance on any crypto asset, it used NFTs to represent the policy with insurers. Insurance policies have unique properties, so ERC20 didn't make sense since it needed to include covered address plus amount plus duration so once reminded of erc 721's existence DeFi's top chad in the industry ran with it what is exciting about a ca casual relationship who knows the larger point of nft and DeFi coming together is more about growing mood than a clear chain of events weird DeFi showed how open finance could become more elfin elves need toys NFTs were right there. Is that even a word? An elfin? Okay, whatever. Give me the hook here, guys. I see that they're backed with by NFTs. I understand. A lot of people in crypto are rich, and that makes all the best stuff too expensive for crypto literate. As much as people like owning expensive stuff in crypto, they like owning stuff they can sell whenever they want. NFTs had managed to be expensive, but they had not managed to be liquid. Ah, I get it. I get it. The stranger products are emergent phenomena of the financializations which is a DAO for CryptoPunks. The punks were made pre-ERC721 and have become quite valuable as early, cool, and rare. I get it. So since these NFTs are hard to trade, there is going to be an incentive to put up a, uh, a pool for them, a collateral pool, so that people could earn the fees if they do get traded. You see what I'm saying? This is pretty cool. I'm going to look into this more. I'm going to read all this. I mean, I don't want to read it in real time like I have been. This is a long article. But uh, let me link this. Let me link this. I'm going to study this on my own. But um, there's something here. NFTs are going to be huge. If UOS drops anymore, it'll be a great opportunity. What's UO UOS? And I'm learning about this this morning. I Before I got online, I you know I read part of this article. And then Mike comes in. He's like talking about the same thing. Maybe, you know. So there's something here. We got to do more research on this. Um, if you could share a little bit more, Mike. Uh, we're listening. Study Lusco later. They're moving past art NFTs and they have one of the best ETH developers as the creator. The Lusco developer created both the ERC tokens you just mentioned. Okay. Lusco. Meme is going to be huge and ultra. Could you link me to that? Where is that? Is that like a meme is a liquidity pool for NFTs or what is that? Yeah, drop me the, the, the linkage, guys. Where do I got to study? I mean, I, I gave you guys some links. Now give me some links. Or, you know, just tell me. So, Lusco. Well, I got to find where Lusco is. Yeah, I can't find that, that Lus Lusco stuff. Sh share me a link there. I've heard good things about Lusco, says Crypto Mike. Never heard about that. Uh, Crypto Mike says, don't buy meme.com. Okay, let me, let me, uh, 
Let me link to that. It may you may uh, be blocked from uh, from linking in the chat. Uh, if Crystal Zill is here, uh, allow those to go through because he's a moderator. Don't buy meme.com. Is it dot com? There it is. Okay. This is uh, Ether or uh, X No, it's probably Ether. Let me switch to. Uh, let me switch to the ETH. And you know what? I'm I'm <laughs> I'm connecting to these networks, guys, because you never know when they do a drop. Well, you never, uh, you know, you never know. One of these days, they're like, "Oh, you connected to our network? We're gonna uni your ass and just drop you 400 tokens or something." <laughs> Meme is an experimental protocol mashing up some of the most exciting innovations in DeFi and crypto collectible put your meme to work by farming exclusive NFT meme stake LP tokens for access to our batch of legendary cards don't buy meme tokens like the likes token I think I don't even know about that one yeah, so I'm going to, let me go ahead and share this now that I, I, I can share links. I'm going to share you guys. So I don't know anything about this, but you guys are like, yo, check this out. I'm going to check this out. I will check it out. Uh, and then there's another one that Puff and Stuff is talking about here. He said, uh, lusco.network. Let me check that one out. Lusco.network. Oh, luck. So I put I'm putting Luskco. Luck so. L U K S O. Bringing the new digital economy. Okay. This one's an ICO still. I'm going to leave this tab up. I'm gonna leave this tab up. I'm gonna be a, a thousand. This this uh this meme thing it looks more attractive like just by looking at it real quick because you can connect and it seems like it's already running. But I'm I'm not gonna ignore this either. Where is where's the where's this dumb meme thing? Don't buy meme there it is. Luxo is migrating to X says Sky. I have no idea. Doctor Puff and stuff says he heard rumors about that. Okay. So with this meme, what do I do here? Start farming. Let's go. So you got to have a meme token. You can farm passes. So what do I do? I mean, I got to I got to get meme though, right? They got the Sergi card here, the Vitalik bundle. Okay. Yeah, I got to do more research. I, ha- I have no idea what I'm, I'm, you know, I'm getting into here. You have to buy meme. How much is the meme now? I look over here on Uniswap. It's not li- even listed here. I need. I would need to get the token address. What's the token address here? Let me check to see if I can find it on CoinGecko. Interesting though. It looks cool. 
So it's meme number 299. How much is this token? Oh, hold up. Hold up. We got a low supplier. We got a low supplier. I'm liking this already. These low supply ones um, um, get me excited. This one's at 28,000 supply circulating at 20,000. This one's got a low, lower circulating supply than, uh, than honey. And uh, we're at 759 on this one. Okay, okay. What's the... Uh, all right, all right, all right. So what? You get this meme, and then you farm it, and make more meme? So you deposit meme here. And you earn pineapples. You deposit meme and earn pineapples. Okay, what's the pineapple price here? This is not even listed yet. Hmm. This thing blows up, did a 10, 10x during September. So, so many things did a 10x during September. A lot of DeFi did a 10x during September. All-time high at 19. All-time low at 637. What's up with this pineapple, though? Where is this? Like, is there a... It's not even listed. So, pi, is pineapple like like honey? It's not even hit the charts yet? You can't sell pineapples. Says There is no pineapple. So, so, what's up? If you can't sell pineapples, then what's the point of earning them? You stake meme, earn pineapples, and then if you can't sell the pineapples, what's up with that? Look at this one, the fake Craig Wright. <laughs> uh, he's kind of looking like uh, garbage pail kids, right? Like the new garbage pail kids. Well, then we got to let them bottom out before we decide to get in the right way. There you go. You can farm for apples and then you buy NFTs. Okay. Okay. And then you buy the NFTs. Okay. So you farm for apples then you have pineapples and then you could buy these NFTs. And then what do you do with the NFT? You could stake the NFT. The pineapples pay for the NFT. You could sell them for art and stuff. What could I, I need, I don't, I don't care about the art. I want to sell them for Bitcoin or ETH or how could I get that, that, you know, what's, how am I going to profit off this? Let's get to the bottom line here. I don't care about the art or anything. How am I going to profit off it? Sell. <laughs> Oh, well, it, yeah, you could when the artist works goes up. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, just like any other, you know, I guess, you know, like they got the artist series. I guess, you know, you buy the right one and you could. But this is more like just you're mining a token so that you can get a token to buy art that could maybe go up. I don't know about that. For that, I'll just buy uh, this meme token and hold it and, and wait for it to go up. The art is the profit if you choose the correct one. That's okay. That's cool. So you're still, it's, it's all uh, subjective. Okay. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm looking at math right now. I'm talking about, you know, mathematically, how can we extract some, some profit here? I'm not talking about like, you know, oh, maybe this artist, uh, you know, art may be worth more. That's kind of cute and everything. And I'm sure there's a market for that, but that's not what I'm looking for right now. The art will have uses like authentication. No, I see what the uses are. I mean, I, I get it. I know. I mean, I, I can see that, you know, a, a, a piece of art is unique. Okay. So I get it. I understand that NFTs are unique, but you got to find the right NFT. You know, I, I'm talking about how could I just farm and make passive income? And uh, from what I'm seeing here, it's just like you, you're farming pineapples. And then the only thing you could do is just buy art and then try to sell the art. So, I mean, you know, it's cute, but I'm not that excited. 
now. <laughs> but I'm going to keep my eyes on this. Maybe I'm, um, I still got to keep an eye. Remember, I just figured this out in not even 10 minutes. My plan to extract profit from Lusco is, is buy while it's 200 a coin and sell when it's top 30. Let's go back to this Lusco thing. What's a reverse ICO? How do you uh, get into this reverse ICO? Farming is free. The art is free. And you can sell some of these rare ones for 78 ETH. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'll, I'll keep an eye on it. But you, but, but getting into the farming, you buy, you got to buy a, a, an $800 meme coin. How much have you made? Have you sold any NFTs crypto, Mike? Can we see here, like what the? I see uh, start farming. Okay, I can see this. What's this? U- Universion liquidity provider Genesis token. What is this? Yeah, I guess the speculation here is that someone's going to want to buy these these cards. You know, that's just the speculation that someone's going to want to buy these cards. Maybe. Mooncat selling 20,000 each NFT. Staking Uni version 2 liquidity provider tokens in the liquidity provider Genesis pool earns you roughly one credit per day. With enough pineapples, you can mint an exclusive limited edition. So any liquidity provider token you could stake here? Okay, I mean, this, this, this seems like another thing to do instead of just buying the meme. If you're already in a liquidity pool and Uniswap, like which I am, like for instance, I'm, I've deposited my liquidity uh, tokens to uh, farm Uni. Maybe I can pull that out and put those tokens in here and farm Pineapple instead of Uni. Could I do that? Let's go back to, um, to Uni. So like, let, let, me, let me recap. Oh, go back to Uniswap.org. So I'm, I'm in this, in this pool here let me launch the app so i've deposited my liquidity provider tokens my eth wrap btc liquidity provider tokens and i'm receiving uni okay but could i withdraw these liquidity provider tokens and deposit him it deposited them here into meme If I'm reading this correctly, it just it says deposit Uni version two liquidity provider and earn pineapple. So my my understanding is that which 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 liquidity pro, all of them. Like just to approve, this is five dollars. For ten dollars, you can bet. <laughs> Right. I mean, I'll have to uh, look just to even see if this works. I would have to r- withdraw from this uni pool, which would probably cost me like five to ten bucks. And then I would have to approve and then the uh, which would cost me five bucks here and then deposit, which would probably cost me another five to ten bucks. So you're looking at like anywhere from ten to twenty bucks just to try this out. This is why it needs to be running on X die.
let me know guys maybe somebody has some liquidity i mean mines are all uh, uh deposited right now but i mean if you have some i mean it's worth to see you know i don't know these genesis cards very interesting Mooncat 20k is that here on this uh, website But yeah, this is interesting guys. This is interesting. I mean, I, I'm I'm not a hundred percent on board, but I like it it says do your own research to learn more Well, here's the whole rundown, so I'm going to read this offline. I know we got, we got, uh, I've, I'm you know go, we got homework here, guys. Go down the chat here and look at all the links and there's homework. There's stuff to, to research. We got to, you know, this thing is moving so fast, guys. There's no, one man can't handle it all. I don't care how, how smart or capable you are. There's so much going on that it's just, we need a community here. So let's read this. This dropped September 18th. They might just be the next thing, though. This winner's defi. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. It, uh, I'm gonna look at everything. That's what I'm saying. Instead of being a hater, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out. I like the fact that these meme tokens are like 800 bucks. Invisible friend says not with. IMO here vest or farm token. If you want to do DeFi, this stuff will be just like ETH kitties. Yeah, and ETH kitties, uh, some people made some gains off that. You know, ended up crashing and burning, but at the beginning, there was something there. So read this playbook, uh, and again, I'm gonna do my research. Thank you to Crypto Mike for bringing this to my attention. I, I'll check that out. And then uh, Puppet stuff says, look at Lusco. I haven't figured out uh, what this is. But I got to look and um, I will. SPI says salute to the champ. Thank you. Crypto Mike says when I first bought them, there were 60. When you first bought the meme tokens or when you first bought the NFTs on that site? It's interesting. Yeah, check this don't buy meme stuff. Crypto Mike just dropped me 10 bucks. Thank you, Crypto Mike. He says, thanks, champ. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I appreciate the 10 bucks. Thank you so much there. Shout out to Crypto Mike. Let me uh some dollar bills there. Guys, if you're getting value from the stream, follow Crypto Mike's lead here. Drop a little duck. It's in the bucket. And um, if you guys want to shoot me ETH or Tron, I mean, I'll use that to do more DeFi farming for, for uh, the live examples. So let me uh, link you guys with the ETH address. and the, Well, the ETH and the XDAI is the same. And then the, the, uh, the Tron address here. Shout out to um, Reed Mac. He blessed me with some Tron. And I'm still looking for whoever sent me those 2000 tron last week thank you very much zilla says it could be somebody in his uh his group but uh, that hasn't been confirmed so there you go yeah shout out to those that have tipped me with the tron i appreciate that and uh like reed sent me the the uh the tron and i use that to uh, jump on some T2X and I'll, I'll use it for uh, to continue to do these examples, guys. I think this is important. I mean, I, I know I like to see it done. You know what I mean? Instead of reading and I like to see it done. I like to see all the screens and stuff like that. So when someone shows this live, I mean, it's I would assume it's valuable to someone out there. So um, I'm going to continue to do this and uh, be the, the DeFi guinea pig out here because <laughs> I really don't know if I'm in the green yet considering... All the uh, fees and the potential impermanent loss. 
I seen a message on one of your posts of the person who sent them to you. I, I've had several people send me Tron. One of them was Reed, and he did write, write me a message, and I appreciate that. But uh, there was specifically 2,000 that were sent uh, sometime last week that I haven't been able to locate who it was. So if you're out there, thank you. I mean, it was like somebody who just, like, just silently dropped it on me. I, I thanks. Shout out to Southside. Crypto Mike says Ave Trading. Um, I haven't done that. I mean, if you're talking about the Lend token, you know, I've swang trade that, but that's about it. But yeah, we've covered T2X, Sun, uh, the Tron DeFi. Then we, co- uh, we covered Honey Swap um, and the different liquidity pools over there. The Honey token, I'm really excited about that. Uh, Justin Sun <laughs> sent me the 2000 maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, we talked about that. And uh, it seems like you guys are excited about don't buy uh, and farming limited edition NFTs. So that, that seems pretty exciting. I, I want to check it out and uh, we, we will uh, do more research on that. I linked everything in the chat box and there's plenty of stuff to uh, research here. Uh, what else we talked about pickle. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot. So if there's any potential question, anything you have, just drop it here in the chat. I try to answer every single question. Um, I'm here every single day, weekdays. And I'll continue to share. Uh, I think that uh, this is what needs to be done right now. This is, uh, I told you guys all last year, DeFi is coming. Ether is going to boom. DeFi, and it was my opinion. I said, just wait till after the Bitcoin halving. It's going to get spicy. And, uh, you know, things did follow what, where we expected. Now, it could have been probably even more if it wasn't for the Rona. You know, the Rona kind of threw things off there for a second. I mean, it's still throwing things off, but you know what I mean. But despite that, you know, DeFi did boom and here it is. So let's try it out and see what we can learn about it. Thanks, Champ, and all the boomers in the chat. Yeah, thanks to Puff and Stuff, one of our, uh, I'm not going to say our first follower, but I know you've been following for for years now. And I appreciate that ever since the Steam days. um, I know you blessed us with some tokens or whatnot. And and we're appreciative uh, to everybody that's been hanging out here. So um, I'm listening to all you guys, honestly. I'm going to, I want to keep... I, I want to keep an open mind, but not too open. And I've said this, exam, this example before. Like, you're not going to leave your front door open all the time. But, you know, right now I got it open for a little bit. You know, I feel like the, 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 the climate is good to have it open. And then at one point I'm going to shut it again because, you know, it does get stormy and I don't want the leaves blowing in, okay? And I do have a fence in front of my house and I do lock the doors at a certain point. But uh, right now we do have the door open. And sometimes you got to open and let some fresh air in, Okay. But, uh, you know, to leave it open with no locks and no fence, I don't know about that. But you guys get the point. Yeah, it has been years indeed, Dr. Puffin stuff. I appreciate that. And stay puffing. Stay puffing out there. Uh, shout out to Mike and the rest of the boomers. I'll, I'll keep you guys up, updated tomorrow. I'll be back. It's the voice of the blockchain, Satoshi's big cousin crypto's finest champagne crypto. Thank you.